Hi, this is Dave Seaman, and you're watching DJ Sounds. We're at my house in um, deepest, darkest uh, Nottinghamshire. Um, just getting a, a, a demonstration of the, the new CDJ 2000s, which is very exciting. And um, can't wait to get my hands on a pair, really. 2009 has been uh, it's been a, it's been a good year all, all told. Um, I think the scene's still really healthy around the world. I mean, you know, there's there has been an effect from from the the global recession, that's for sure. But I think um, the kind of the people that generally go clubbing, you know, 18 to 25 year olds generally, or you know, up to 30 year olds, are probably least affected by by the recession. You know, they maybe haven't got families and mortgages and, and stuff so uh, and, and even the people that, that have I think you know, if you've got some money left at the end of the month or the end of the week then you, you want to go and, and forget about uh, about your daily problems and go clubbing so um, so you know clubbing's kind of a little bit recession proof in that in that sort of way but um, obviously the big companies and some of the big events um, uh, have been affected because big companies are not putting in the sponsorship money that they might have been but I think all told it's been a good year, it's been quite uh, exciting musically as always, there's, there's always loads of great music out there, it's just a case of finding it and um, sometimes it's, it takes a lot of time to, to wade through to find the, find the stuff that you want as we're becoming ever more saturated by more and more tunes every week, um, but I, I, think, I think it's been a good year, it's nice to see some melody and some soul coming back into music, I think it's been a bit too linear and a bit too tracky and stuff for a little while. So. Um, yeah, well, well on 2010, but 2009 has been a good one. But yeah, I'm still running audio therapy, which has been going now for 10 years almost. <laughs> Although we did have a bit of a uh, false start. We put our first track out in 1999 and it got swallowed up by a, a major. You know, they, they bought it, bought it off us, and then we ended up not putting another one out for about three years. <laughs> so we got distracted by lots of other things. Or, um, uh, anything shiny basically distracted us for a while, but um, we we kind of got going and um, still going, still going, still going well. I mean, it's really tough running a, a record label at the moment. Um, the margin, you know, physical sales are down and go down a lot quicker than I think anybody really anticipated. But the, and the margins on the digital side of things are so so much smaller. You have to sell so many more copies that um, everybody's having to keep their overheads down a lot more than than we were during during those glory years in the 90s in the UK for selling music um, and um, you know we, we, um, we but we're still we're still enjoying it you know we, we love I mean the thing for me especially is finding music from around the world music that I'm given when I go uh, go to clubs or um, get sent through you know, through links or through MySpace or Facebook or whatever it may be and um, and then Putting the package together um, and trying to, um, you know, and, and then just giving these people a platform, to putting, putting the music out. The the thing for the uh, about the CDJ 2000 for me is is the ability to to prepare stuff before you know you go out. Um, the idea of, of the software, the record box software, and being able to. You know, choose your tracks and then actually put loops and and and, and cue points um, into that, and then have that ready to go. So um, uh, it's more you, you're creating more of a performance, and then it remembers everything as well. So um, you know, that's if you're doing something on the fly and it's live and it's great, but you and then next time you can remember it. So you're constantly evolving a set, and you're constantly building things, and putting your own identity on things. You know, you're not just playing. Um, the, the records in the same way anybody else, or the tracks that in the same, still say records, <laughs> say it playing the tracks in the same way that anybody else would, you know, you, you, you're doing it your way, you, you're putting your your stamp on things. It's like, uh, I, an analogy that I use a lot is, is, the, class, is the composer, the classical conductor, um, not the composer, the conductor, is where you know you might be with an orchestra you might get two different conductors and the, the way that the, the the sound comes out is completely different because they stamp their their identity on it on a piece of music so um i think that's that's one of the most exciting things you know i, I mean of course to be able to turn up with a usb stick or an sd card and just off you go is uh for somebody who travels a lot i mean i'm so glad to see the back of record boxes 
Um, and I'll, I, won't, I won't be uh, sorry to see the back of CD wallets as well, to be honest. All that burning and, and stuff in, you know, and, and loot, you know, having to keep doing that in, in hotel rooms. I'd much rather be getting down to the exact bits that I wanted of tracks and keeping it on file and on, plugging in wherever I went and off we go. It's, uh, it's very exciting. I've done a lot of mix compilations um, uh, in my in my DJ career. I was, uh, in fact, I'll tell you, I know because I counted them the other day. It's 26 I've just finished the Renaissance one this year. Um, the actual actual physical CDs that have come out, and um, and it, it, you'd think I'd, I'd kind of um, got the hang of it by now, but it's not really the case. Uh, every every one throws up a new challenge and a new set of problems to overcome and in some ways it's getting more difficult um, with the the, the uh, event of, of iTunes becoming such an important part of, of selling the albums and stuff so there's new rules and regulations with regards to the, the, the um, digital download rights and things that you have to take into account and it's, you know, a lot of people just think that we kind of get a load of tunes together and mix them one day and give it to the record label and it's out a few days later and it really isn't it's almost like a four or five month pro a process now from from getting the tracks originally and waiting you know go, telling everybody that I'm about to do an album getting in lots and lots of music waiting through it all and sending out a, a wish list of things I'd like and seeing what comes back what I can have what I can't have and then um, and then trying to fix it together and then you might not get something that you thought you had and you have to try and fill the gap with something else and this could go on for a long long longer time because um, it is a labour of love I, I really spend a lot of time trying to craft mix compilations I don't just see it as you know going from one track to the next to the next to the next there's lots of editing lots of nipping and tucking it's all about the flow of the album from word go right to the very end it you know it's a, the whole cliched thing when DJs talk about journeys and you know, it sometimes makes me think of bus drivers some <laughs> some, some journeys that I hear supposed ones but uh, if you really really do it well and really put the time and effort in which um, I hope that that shines through in what I do is it's it, it can be you know, a few weeks putting some of these mixes together and keep because it's you know every time you have to listen back to the whole piece you have to just listen to it and I'll just like, you have to listen to the whole album which is over an hour it's time and then you go back and listen to it and you listen to it again for an hour and it's two CD so you know your, your day could be spent listening to this thing over and over and over again crafting and just getting it exactly perfect um, but you know at the end that's that's what you try to strive for something that's still going to be listened to in years time is and still stands the test of time if you you know and uh, the whole idea of you know I have some some people argue with me about oh, well DJs you should have two turntables and a mixer and you know you should go as that's a live a live thing you, if you want to listen to a DJ live you got to listen to him live that's great but it's like saying a band like the Beatles should never have done Sgt Pepper they should only have done live at the Hollywood Bowl it's just a ridiculous argument the art of mixing is so much more than two turntables and a mixer and what this whole scene was built on technology and, and, and um, the sampler so that should be embraced the art of mixing should be taken as far as it can possibly be done you know in, in the technology that we've got um, and now with things like Ableton Live it's, you know, it's a case of knowing when to stop because you can go too far people do fiddle too much with things sometimes so it's about keeping the essence of all that's great about all the music that you're putting together but stamping your your identity on it by the way that you you put it together you know because you could have uh, two DJs ten records same records same order and it would sound completely different so it's how how you put it together and uh, uh, I said this year that I'd probably never do another one again because it was so long but uh, that's kind of worn off again I probably will